What's up, guys? Welcome to my channel. My name is Just Jen, and this is part two of the George Floyd video. Now, the first video that we did, well, that I did was Tucker Carlson on X, formerly known as Twitter, and he just did a monologue and brought a guest on with George Floyd, talking about George Floyd. Now, I am bringing an expert in the medical field on my podcast with me now. She's a dear friend of mine. But I, at for, uh, first and foremost, I do have to bring this up and let you guys know that this is an opinion disclaimer. There's my friend. Hello, D. How Hello. are you? All right, guys. Opinion disclaimer. The views here and opinions expressed on YouTube are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Just Gen Reacts. Any content provided by our bloggers or authors are of their own opinion and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or individual, or anyone or any. Thing. So I just had to put that disclaimer out there. This is my dear friend. She's an emergency room nurse. She can tell you how long she's been in. Uh, about 15 years in the emergency room. And you're a registered nurse, correct? I'm a registered nurse. Yes. So this, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical examiner, but I am a registered nurse and I've always been in the ER. So. so being in the emergency room, you see a lot of overdoses. You see a lot of death. You see a, a lot of heart issues and, and whatnots, right? Yes. We see a lot of heart attacks, a lot of uh, overdoses, specifically a lot more lately. Um, so I was very, very intrigued by this uh, trial and by the fentanyl. Now George you watched the whole George Floyd trial. Yes, I did. I was at home uh, sick, but I was watching every single moment. So I knew when they, when Hennepin County was going to release the original autopsy findings. And we have that. And I, I, as soon as they did it, I emailed it to myself and just a few minutes later, they were inaccessible. So. Yeah. Yeah, they were because Officer Tatum and a bunch of other big YouTubers, Tucker Carlson, mm -hmm. they let it be known that there has been some tampering with the autopsy because the first autopsy that we're going to be reviewing today clearly states that he did not die by the hands of Derek Chauvin. Yes. And it's just an initial autopsy. It's not, um, sometimes they have to wait for toxicology and other tissue samples to come back. So it doesn't necessarily reflect the final matter and cause or manner and cause of death but it was the original autopsy and used to be able to be found on hennepin county site but can't can't find it anymore not anymore no now, in the in the chauvin case don't you think that the original autopsy would have been beneficial for the defense oh absolutely it's got um in the original autopsy, the original findings, it also includes the emergency room and what the emergency room did um, as far as labs, the things we did for intubation, the things that were done, uh, how he presented to the ER and the first aid that was given on scene in the ambulance and in the ER, including toxicology. We always, always, when we have a code or a resuscitating situation, we always draw labs, urine, things like that. Right. And that's probably something that shouldn't be, shouldn't be fudged. Uh, and we lost you for a second there. Uh, it, it's, it's, is it safe to say that there is a strong possibility that these documents were altered? Um, I don't know if they were altered, but they definitely were added to added something added. To yes. It. Yes. The original uh, autopsy findings the day after George Floyd's death, they were done at nine in the morning. Those are the ones that I sent to you copies mm. of. Um, since then, Tucker has provided the audio of conversations that have been had from an, another medical examiner who is a very high profile medical examiner that was requested to go mm. over this autopsy. And Mr. Mitchell, famous, right? Dr. Mitchell, right? Yeah, very famous in the circles of just like uh, 
lawyer uh, Crump is famous in the circles for civil rights and things like that. He's a he's a personality figure. Oh, what what keeps happening? Sorry, you got you got kicked off again. So uh, Dr. Mitchell added to the original autopsy because the original autopsy that we're going to look at does not include asphyxiation. It doesn't include anything, any kind of injuries to the neck, which it, your medical, uh, out of all of your background, out of all of the schooling that you've done, out of all of the situations that you've been, the years of the emergency room situation that you've been in, if somebody died from their neck being suppressed, don't you think that would be included in a pathology, uh, in the pathology of the uh, of the autopsy? We might not see it in the ER. It might be bruising that takes a minute, um, but we will see if the trachea has shifted. Um, we will see certain indicators and definitely by the next morning, they would have seen that. And that's included in the report that they specifically did not see that. Mm, right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think it's time we bring up, well, first I wanna add this. This is a, what is a fatal dose of fentanyl? You sent this to me, thank you. Yes, and in oh. this article, it does address George Floyd specifically. Oh, good. So Paul Craig, let me see where is, where is the what is the fentanyl overdose? I have to find it on my thing here. I, can I got it. I got it. Nope, I got it. Okay. Yeah, I was just finding it to scroll. Okay, so Paul Craig Roberts works for the Institute of Political Economy, and he says this. As of January 2023, the toxicology report cited a new URL. This is a newly released transcripts that are a part of legal filing by Lane's attor uh, attorney, Earl Gray, who has requested the Hennepin County uh, District Court dismiss the case against his client. Now, uh, that would be the, um, who is Gray? Is that one of the police officers, correct? I think so, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, Lane, Lane. Uh, yeah, isn't that the Asian guy? There were four officers involved, including Chauvin. Okay. Let's see what this says here. The WordPress. Let's see if we can do this here. Okay. Why does it keep kicking you off? I am not sure. I'm sitting right next to my router. I can move to a different spot. So in this, in, in this document here. Yes. This is an on-site investigation. This is basically the new new studies on deaths caused by fentanyl analogs, which would be the the chemical compounds of fentanyl that literally is how people die. And and I don't know if I don't know if we should. I don't want to talk about this. Is getting a little bit like too too much, but I want to talk about what is a fatal dose just to keep it. I wrote simple. it down from this article, what it said and compared it to some different things from the different uh, boards of medicine and CDC. And uh, typically it is uh, an average is 9.96 nanograms mm -hmm. per milliliter. Mm -hmm. And he's got 11 nanograms. And George oh, Floyd yeah. had 11 nanograms. And you have to remember, <laughs> is a very, very fast metabolizing drug. So you'll see on his medical report mm -hmm. that included with the report I sent you of the initial autopsy, um, it would have been still metabolizing. And it did come up in court specifically, and anybody can check this out, go watch the trial. Um, that DNA was found on fentanyl pieces in the back of the cop car. Yes. So this is from George Floyd's saliva. Yes, he was chewing and, and, and it's on video. They even zoom in, they're able to zoom in and on his tongue is a baggie. And that is what they found. And like Dorinda said, it's a very fast acting. It's water soluble. So it doesn't have to go through your fat layers. It just hits the bloodstream and that's mm -hmm. it. That's why it's so it can deadly. go through the mucous membranes of your of your mouth. 
and your skin it's it goes yep. sub subcutaneously it, it's transdermally yes transdermally and it also can go through the air you can breathe it in through the mucous membranes it could just it's yep. very deadly and because it's water soluble that's why it's deadly it's so fast yeah but it also leaves the body very quickly and that is why you see so many addicts today dying because they do it in a few hours. They're sick again. They have to keep doing it. And they're getting it from all these unknown sources. And uh, yeah, they're, these are not chemists. These are not pharmacology majors who are selling this sh shit. This is street level <laughs> stuff and cartels that really don't care if they kill people or not. So and if you can see in micrograms. If you right micrograms, absolutely. So the average death dose was nine point nine six. Correct. That's an and, uh, nanograms per milliliter. Okay. Mm -hmm. According to George Floyd's toxicology report, his blood contained eleven nanograms per milliliter of fentanyl, plus five point six nanograms per milliliter norfentanyl. 19 nanograms of methamphetamine and three other drugs. Definitely poly substance use. I know that it contained nicotine, mm -hmm. um, caffeine, 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 methamphetamine, um, opiates, and then a lot of those metabolites are from the fentanyl itself. It metabolizes down so quickly, it was already metabolizing. So this is important to uh, to understand here. It is clear from the police recordings that Floyd complained of difficulty breathing prior to any police restraint. And wasn't he caught again prior to this event doing the same thing? Same back type traffic stop, calling for his mom, saying he couldn't breathe, trying to ingest fentanyl, trying to ingest Percocets. Yeah. Yeah. So this was a tactic, I think, that George Floyd grew accustomed to doing in order to avoid detection and, and arrest. Yes. Detection and arrest. A oh, lot of people, I have a lot of experience with my family in law enforcement. I've done a lot of ride alongs. The very first thing they say is I can't breathe. Not that he, you know, he asked to be put in a prone position. He asked to lay down. He wanted out of the car. And um, unfortunately, he had already done substances that we're going to depress that diaphragm pretty depress. quickly. Yeah. Yeah. You depress felt it when it hit. Oh yeah. See, a lot of people don't understand how fentanyl overdoses or opiate overdoses work and how the, the science behind them is your first, the first phase of a, a fentanyl opiate overdose is respiratory arrest. And then that is what leads eventually into cardiac arrest and that is cardiac death is is the ultimate thing that your heart stops beating and that is how every opiate addict who is overdosing uh, the fatal overdoses that is how they become fatals because of cardiac death yep basically everybody dies of a heart attack in the end everybody does so it is clear from the police recordings that Floyd complained of breathing difficulty prior, that is why it's in italics here, prior to any police restraint. In other words, he was in the process of dying prior to the arrival of police. When the police recognized his condition, they indeed called for medics. Floyd was restrained on his stomach according to protocol and Floyd himself asking to get placed on the ground because he is of his claustrophobia. Mm -hmm. So having a person on their stomach keeps them from choking on their own vomit. And yeah, because, you can turn their head to the side. Yeah. Which and, his head was turned to the side. And you'll see even in the report, he's got abrasions to one side. Right. Where the see from the video. Well, because he's moving around and, and if your your face is on the gravel, if your face is yes. on, you're going to get contusions and you're going to get scrapes because your skin is soft and it's up. It's like scrubbing your face with a brick. Basically. And he was resisting. And he was definitely resisting. We saw the video. So having a person on, on their stomach prevents them from choking on their own vomit. And this is why police protocol requires them to be restrained on their stomachs. And again... 
the tactic that they used was not banned at this time. The knee on the back, the knee on the back of the neck, he didn't have his knee on his larynx. He didn't have it on his windpipe. He didn't have it on his voice box. It, the whole thing is screwed up. And I don't, for the life of me, I don't think that Derek Chauvin should be in prison for the rest of his life for an overdose, because even in this report, it says that he was in the process of dying and overdosing before police interaction. And what you have to understand from George Floyd is he had numerous substances, not just the fentanyl. Um, according to witness testimony, his ex-girlfriend said he was nodding out in the car before mm -hmm. they went in to pass the counterfeit bills. And they didn't want him driving they didn't want he's that he was ingesting stuff and um that is in witness testimony you can watch it in the courts yep so this is a very amazing uh amazing article that you sent me i will include this in the link of the video so if you want to go ahead and look it over yourself i will do that so you guys can look it up but this basically what this is, is disputing literally everything that the mainstream media told us about. They keep kicking her off of here. I don't know why they keep doing that. Uh, it's so, the Trumpy bear in the background. Yeah, the Trumpy bear. Oh, I sent three articles to the Minneapolis Star Tribune about the facts of the case and I've had no, have had no acknowledgement whatsoever. So this man has submitted all of his findings to numerous media outlets and they said nothing absolutely nothing the minneapolis star tribute is no doubt afraid of one having all advertisers pulled by businesses afraid they will be burned out Two, being burned down itself being called racist by its employees which always has had more force when it comes to outside and editors are afraid of being fired for being racist so don't expect any investigation or honest reporting from the hometown newspaper in Minneapolis some of the uh, websites have traditionally republished columns into damning America it's colonial wars that George Floyd's death is a grist for their mills it's it is more proof of American inequity so I'm going to re I'm, we're going to get into the facts of the case. We're going to get into the actual autopsy here, but Dorin, uh, Dorinda, what do you, what do you think should happen here with all of this stuff coming out? Right. Don't you feel like we, in my opinion, evidence was suppressed. Evidence was altered. Evidence was clearly um, between the medical examiner, the prosecutor, George Floyd, in my opinion, um, was made, he was used. Yes. And if I, I was, upon. That, if I was his family, I would be very mad. It was a narrative that fit at a time when we were going into an election season. COVID was at its height. As a matter of fact, George Floyd on this report, he has tested. Okay. That, I can't say that word. Okay. Well, we were in the middle of a crisis, yeah, a scamdemic. Yeah, a crisis, and uh, it fit the perfect narrative. Yeah, it did. It did because in the autopsy report, we see the very, uh, we see that he, in fact, had that. Uh, as a, a lot cause of people death. tell you to follow the science, and I'm just following the science. I'm just looking at medical facts. Me too. All right. So let's add this to the stage. Sorry, guys. I don't know what hap keeps happening, but it, she'll be right back if she clicks right out. Um, if not on her, it's probably on this platform because, of course, it always gives us problems. Why do I pay you $49 a month, StreamYard, <laughs> if you keep doing this? All right. So here it is, you guys. This is the Hennepin County Medical Examiner's Autopsy Report. As you can see here, the cardiopulmonary arrest complicating law enforcement subdual. Now, let me just tell everyone, you cannot get this anymore. 10 minutes after I, I printed this to myself, the link was unavailable. Error. And here we have a 46-year-old man who became unresponsive 
while being restrained by law enforcement officers. He received emergency medical care in the field and subsequently in the Hennepin Healthcare Emergency Department, but could not be resuscitated. So number one, the final diagnosis is blunt force injuries, cutaneous blunt force injuries of the forehead, face, and upper lip, mucosal injuries of the lips, cutaneous mm -hmm. blunt force injuries of the shoulders, hands, elbows, and legs, D, pattern contusion in some abraded of the wrists and consistent with restraints via handcuffs. Yes. Natural diseases. He has uh, heart disease. In fact, 90% blocked the widow maker as it's deemed the main artery. Mm -hmm. uh, multifocal, severe, severe hypertensive heart disease. Cardiomegaly of the biventricle dilation so cardiomegaly is is an enlarged heart so your heart is a muscle and his muscle obviously had to pump harder and as muscles do they grow and they have to pump harder and faster to supply oxygen um, and supply circulation so he had an enlarged heart that was just a fact and this is a preliminary autopsy it was done the morning after his body was brought to Hennepin County. As you can see, the date of the, uh, this was done on May 26th at 9.25 a.m. Yes. The date of death was 5.25.20 at 9.25 p.m. So 12 hours after death, 12 hours post-mortem, as they would call it in the ER, post-mortem, a post-mortem examination would be an autopsy. Correct. Um, I remember that for medical term. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically here what it's saying is, is blunt force injuries, natural diseases, which, you know, doing drugs and having hypertension, having high blood pressure, having blocked arteries, it's probably not a good idea to do a bunch of drugs or ingest a bunch of drugs, especially uppers and downers, methamphetamine and fentanyl at the same time in lethal doses. Yes. All right. And then it says here he had a pelvic tumor, left pelvic tumor. Yes. I think he had a tumor on his adrenal, like an adrenal tumor. I, mm -hmm. I'd have to read, I'll read along with you, but um, sometimes these tumors can be cancer. Sometimes they can be benign. Yeah, I mean, this is just telling his body way too much than I. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> We're going to be saying stuff about George Floyd that we never thought we wanted to know. Anyways, uh, this one is pretty uh, important. Section three of the original autopsy states no life threatening injuries have been identified. Number one, no facial or a mucosal or conjunctive uh, conjunctival petechiae, which is a hemorrhaging of the petechiae, which are the blood vessels in the eye, for those of you who don't understand medical terminology. And sometimes that does take, we don't see that in the ER. They will see it the next morning though. Oh, 100%. That is yeah. why when you strangle somebody, they have particular hemorrhaging. They have little spots of blood, yeah. broken blood vessels in their eyes. That is a telltale sign of, a, of any type of asphyxiation. Yes. So there's no scalp, soft tissue, or brain injuries. There's no chest wall, soft tissue injuries, rib fractures, other than a single rib fracture from CP CPR, which is... <laughs> When you're pumping on that chest cavity, it's very, very, very possible. So his uh, his his spinal column, nothing. Visceral injuries, which means his insides, nothing. Incision and subcutaneous dissection of posterior and lateral neck, shoulders, flanks, buttocks, negative for occult trauma. What does that mean? I find this very interesting because his neck didn't have any signs of of trauma. There wasn't huge bruising or a puncture wound or anything like, you know, broken bones found in scan and things, things like that. So. Which, which I find kind of, um, here, I want to show you this really quickly. Let's they would have scanned his artery, his carotid artery. Uh, they would have scanned his neck and they're not finding any, anything, any injury, right there. So I mean, not in the soft tissue anyway. 
the Associated Press, I think it's it's important to add to, uh, let me see, view tab. Let's see, where is the, let's remove this for a second. We'll go back to this. Mm -hmm. I want to add this Associated Press where the, this is the medical examiner. He said his office received hundreds of calls, some harassing and threatening former Washington, D.C. medical examiner, Dr. Roger Mitchell, who is an expert uh, in in custody, meaning under, in police custody, deaths. So Dr. Roger Mitchell also called Baker, who was the medical examiner, the ME. He was unhappy. Baker said the two talked about neck compression and Mitchell also, this is important. Mitchell also planned to publish a critical op-ed in the Washington Post. An op-ed, huh? Baker said he considered Mitchell's, Mitchell's opinion and analysis before. Hold on. Let's blow this up real big for everyone to see. Before, before adding neck compression to his report. So if I see a preliminary autopsy that says there's no soft tissue damage that they're seeing in the neck, but then I have somebody adding later after public pressure mm. injuries to the neck, then I have a problem. So Baker also he said neck compression is a unique form of restraint that he'd never seen used before, which is okay. So that that's because nobody has ever died of that. While well, because no one has ever eaten it in fentanyl, that much fentanyl and meth and have died for this. So of course this medical examiner would never see something like that. So of course he also testified that Floyd said, I can't breathe during a struggle in a police vehicle before he was restrained. Just Paul, like this prior. Just like this prior. Doesn't negate this one, but this is a pattern with him. It's a pattern. Mm -hmm. Paul asked him if he, it was possible that Floyd was having trouble breathing because he was experiencing a cardiac event to which Baker replied that it was possible, but that he couldn't say for sure. Now, Again, how we describe the fentanyl, it goes through your system very quickly. And, you know, when th that's, I believe, yeah. when he ingested it before he even got on the ground, I think he was experiencing a, an, an overdose. Okay, According so here's the testimony in, in the trial. The, mm -hmm. the ex girlfriend said he had also, um, uh oh, or aftermarket Percocets in the car. Oh, so go back, go back because you got kicked out. The um, girlfriend said what he had, they were worried about him anyway, before he walked into the store because he was nodding he had out. already been taking, he was nodding out and he had already been taking aftermarket Percocets and things he identified as Percocet. But, you know, um, we're also dealing with someone with a very high tolerance and oh. someone who's counter affecting, counteracting the effects with, with methamphetamine. methamphetamines. Right. So in order to like, yeah. As somebody who's been in, in that lifestyle before, like once I, I, I used to do uppers and then when I got my hands on downers, I never wanted to touch uppers again because the more uppers you do, the more downers you have to do to come down from that. So it counteracts like a speedball. You yeah. see a lot of people doing heroin and cocaine together because it's like a, you know, a real rush, but of course, after that comes down from the cocaine, the heroin lasts longer. So you, 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 it's like an up, down, up, down. But like methamphetamine and fentanyl is probably not a good idea to eat, no matter how big you are, no matter how how seasoned of an addict you are. Yeah, not everybody is untouchable. And here in this part of the autopsy, we are at the section where we just got got done with. The no injuries, no life threatening, threatening injuries, which the media said, yes, he died from a knee on the neck, but we're not seeing it here. Oh, in they the said that day one, you know, right when this report was being published and was not allowed to be accessed, the media was already saying things that 
you would have to look at tissues and toxicology in a microscope and that's not going to be on this report, but the media narrative had already begun. Absolutely. Yes. So viral testing by the Minnesota Department of Health, post-mortem nasal swab, positive for the word we can't say. Okay. At that time, we were doing um, nasal swabs on everyone. Yeah, I remember. ER. Yes. I remember that, man. Oh, God. And not not just like in, in a little bit in the nostril. We're going all the way to your I brain. I try not to get into your brain when I do flu oh. or other swabs in the nose. But yeah. <laughs> just thinking about it right now brings me back. So hemoglobin, uh, the hemoglobin, the post-mortem femoral blood. This is where you take blood from the leg, the femoral yes. artery. So here's, uh, it's at the hemoglobin is at 38%. Can you shed some light on 38% what the hemoglobin would be? Uh, well, your blood starts to clot too. Um, things are going to be really skewed. Your body goes through a whole cascade of things skewing. Your blood sugar is off. Your hemoglobin is off. Um, later in the report, it reports that he has sickle cell trait, um, so those are just things that really I wouldn't concern myself with in the ER. I just want to get you breathing again. I want to get a heartbeat again. Right. And he was code blue when he, he was uh, code blue on arrival, right? Yes. Yeah. A, a code blue is just, you know, active resuscitation needed. Okay. And no heartbeat, no breathing. Yeah. Well, we can have a code blue that's a respiratory arrest or a cardiac arrest, but it definitely requires intervention. Okay medical intervention to bring you back to life hopefully to get you living it without that intervention you are going to die or you're already dead and we're trying to revive you with a series of medications or chest compressions or defibrillation yeah okay toxicology let's get into that because i think this is imperative and this was this was uh from my standpoint, as an outsider looking in, this would have been the nail in the cross for the defense because with this much fentanyl and methamphetamines and, and all of this taken into account, this man was dying before that man even put his knee remotely near his back or his neck. Oh, yeah. I think, you know, he was already nodding out. He went into the store. Um yeah. He Plus, you've got to remember, his blood pressure probably went up. He's got this severe hypertension, this enlarged heart, this blockage in his artery. And then add more drugs on the top of that. When he, he, yeah, he yeah. went into the police car and he ingested more drugs. So his oh. fight or flight response had kicked in. Yeah, adrenaline. Absolutely. So here's the toxicology report. Now, this was collected at 9 p.m. At 9 p.m. the night that he came in and he was declared dead 25 minutes later. That's when they called time of death, blood and uh, blood drug and novel psychoactive substances screen substances screen Plural. detected mm -hmm. fentanyl, 11 nanograms per milliliter. Number two for nor fentanyl 5.6 that's just a metabolite of fentanyl. So it had already started metabolizing. Yeah. And, and after so many hours, it will metabolize into morphine. Actually, it's crazy. Uh, 4-A-P-P. I don't know what that is. What Do you know what this is? I don't know what that is. No, I'd have to look it up. Okay. So methamphetamine, 19 nanograms per milliliter, per milliliter of blood, just so you guys know. Uh, 11 hydroxy, delta 9 THC. 1.2 nanograms, delta nine, carboxy THC, delta nine, delta nine. Uh, yeah, it's all just marijuana. Cotinine, positive. It's That's going to be, I think, nicotine. your um, nicotine. Nicotine, That's right. Mm -hmm. Caffeine, positive. Must have been drinking coffee. So the blood vo uh, volatiles, negative for ethanol, meaning alcohol. So no alcohol in the system. Urine drug screen, presumptive positive for cannabinoids, methamphetamines and a fentanyl metabolite. So it's already, like you said, it's already metabolizing out of your system. So uh, the morphine is free because there wasn't enough time for the fentanyl to metabolize into morphine. All right, let's go to page three, I think. So, and here's the sickle cell, sickled appearing cells, which 
this is neither here nor there when you have a code blue in your emergency room. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's he was positive for the stuff we can't say. So here's the original autopsy report. The original autopsy report doesn't include what the media is saying. If we can go back and look again, nope. Now, these are just preliminary findings, so you're not going to see a manner and cause of death yet. They've got to wait for toxicology and tissues to come back. Okay. But so, already the media had the narrative. The media already had the narrative. Yes. There's the initial report. There's no findings of petechia, uh, petechial hemorrhaging. There's no indication. I think there was a, a part of that autopsy where there was no neck injuries at all. Let's see if I can find that because that's kind of important, don't you think? Yeah, there's if there are three parts to this. You know, you're going to get a general sure. description of the body. I found it. Now, if you look up right here, we're going to read this really quickly. Positive identification is confirmed by comparison, anti-mortem and post-mortem fingerprints. So they took to the FBI for probably an NCIC search of his fingerprints to determine the identification of this male. When initially examined, the body is in a sealed, locked, and properly labeled body bag. Evidentiary paper bags are secured over the hands. That is to prov that is to protect their fingerprints. Yeah, the any degradation of evidence, we will put paper bags over the hands, um, the feet. We leave all tubes where they're supposed to be. If we know that this is a medical examiner case um, or an unwitnessed arrest or something like that, we don't touch anything that we put in, we leave in. We just, the medical examiner gets to look at all of that. We seal the body bag, we put a toe tag on them, and we immediately call um, for time of death we pronounce and then the medical examiner comes and picks them up. That's a very, uh, you know, it's, I'm, I'm glad that you came on to explain all of this because from, you know, we have everybody on the internet who are M WebMD doctors. They are lawyers, they're experts, they know everything, but they only watch like the first 48 and they think that they're already a forensic pathologists and whatnots, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm grateful that you came on. I really do appreciate it. So now here's the preliminary uh, findings of the examination, the external examination of George Floyd's body. The body is that of a normally developed muscular and adequately nourished appearing six foot four inch long, 223 pound male whose appearance is consistent with reported age of 46. Uh, years old. Unfixed uh, lividity is present is present on the posterior dependent surfaces of the body. Well, because he was laying flat, the blood has now pooled. Mm. Because Pulled remember, this was done at nine. You know, this was done the next morning. Yeah, yeah, this is done all the way twelve hours later. Yeah. So rig rigor mortis rigor, rigor mortis is established yeah. in all of the major muscle groups so uh, relenting with modest pressure so pressing it you can feel that the that there's mod with modest pressure meaning you poke the body to see if it's stiff <laughs> the, temp it <laughs> the temperature is somewhat cool following refrigeration because you can't leave the body out in the warm hospital well, the hospitals are never warm. What am I talking about? Sometimes, you know, if we have a death and we work a code in an emergency room setting and we know that this is going to be a high profile and there are homicide detectives all over the hospital and they are in the room and um, watching every single thing we're doing mm -hmm. and uh, we will immediately call for the medical examiner. They will immediately pick up the body. We don't refrigerate them, but they will until they can look at them the next day. Other times, we will send them down to our morgue to be refrigerated until the funeral home. Why do they keep cutting her out? The funeral home. The fu Yeah, you call for a funeral home. Or a medical examiner. Or, yeah, or ME. Mm -hmm. All right, so the, the scalp is covered with closely cropped black hair in a normal distribution, which some early vertex of thinning, so he had a receding hairline. The arides are brown and the pupils are round and equal in diameter. That's the eyes. Yep. So is, I mean, he was dead. So his pupils are 
dilated, dilated and, and fixed, yeah. fixed and dilated, meaning they're not going to react at all to light because you're dead. Your yeah. pupils restrict and they, they contract when exposed to light because you're alive. Then one of the main marvels of like really cool things about the human body, right, is the dilation of and the contraction of your pupils when you're exposed. It's really complex, the body is, but like so cool, man. Yeah, a lot of times if we get a head trauma, um, uh, let's say they had beat a stroke, or we'll have one pupil that is dilated and one that is constricted. So if or they have a pupil on one side, that's a problem. <laughs> Yeah, stroke too. That's a telltale yeah. sign of a, of a stroke as well. Your pupils are not reactive. Okay, or a traumatic brain injury as well, right? Yeah, the one will be fixed and open. One will be, you know, constricted. So here we have uh, the eyes were normal for a dead body. Mm -hmm. The conjunctive eye or the conjuncti the conjunctiva. <laughs> the conjunctiva, yeah. <laughs> Conjunctiva mm -hmm. are somewhat injected, but there are no bulbar or palebral uh, conjunctival uh, petechia, meaning petechial hemorrhaging. There's no so there's no little red pinpoints where you know he's been starved of oxygen and his pupils have busted out, and you know they're where they're supposed to be. His eyes are where they're supposed to be. There there's no you know, uh, red marks where they didn't get oxygen or where pressure has made the blood vessels burst. Right. Which you would see in a case where you are deprived of oxygen or choked or asphyxiated in any way, there would be signs on your throat. There would be petechial hemorrhaging. I had it when my, my, I, I was choked the first bad relationship that I had. I had I had broken blood vessels all around my pupil. It mm -hmm. was it was crazy because people I was have so blood pressure in their eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they sure do. The lot can be told by your eyes, your eye fluid too. It's crazy. So there's no particular hemorrhaging at all. The there's no facial uh, periorbital or orbital, I mean, or mm -hmm. oral mucosal petechia. There's none of that in the eyes or, or the mouth. Or the mouth. None of it. Mm -hmm. The external auditory canals are free of blood. Okay. So his ears are fine. Ears. He wasn't bleeding from the ears. Right. Wasn't bleeding from the ears. The lobe of the left ear is remotely pierced once and the ears are otherwise remarkable, meaning there's nothing wrong with them. The nares are patent, are patent. The nasal and facial bones are stable in palpation uh, and uh, a faint two centimeter maximum dimension B shaped scar is near the superior end of the left jaw line. So he had facial a facial injury at some point. Well, he was turned sideways during some of this, so he would have hit the curb or you know, this was an active resist. So I'm not sure when this would have happened but it seems consistent with a fight with police. Yep. Uh, or scraping your face up against the, the, the pavement, right? Yeah. The teeth appear uh, native and, and in good repair. Very short black mustache and beard. Subtle is the usual distribution on the face. And a small patch of slightly longer black hair is just inferior of the lower lip. So he had somewhat of a goatee, maybe? Yeah. The neck is easier to shave. This is so important right here. The neck, yes. the star of the show. The neck is straight and the trachea is midline. What does that mean, Dorinda? Well, usually, usually, um, if you have compression on one side of your neck, it's going to push your trachea to the other side. We see it also with um, a deflated lung or something like that. We want the trachea to be midline. Straight. 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 Yes. So obviously a knee on one side of the neck with enough force, I would think would shift that trachea. Yeah, because your trachea, you can move it with your hands very easily. I do use to do that. I used to do that all the time. Um <laughs> you can see from the video, he's not on his trachea. He's not No, I have a picture of it. Yeah. I have a picture of he's it. He's actually more on the side of the neck, back by a carotid or a right here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it wasn't nowhere near his his esophagus, nowhere near his breath. He he did he probably was experiencing difficulty breathing because he was in respiratory arrest. He was in the thralls of an opiate 
overdose. Absolutely. So yeah, you're gasping. You can't breathe. It doesn't matter how much pressure or there was no pressure at all placed upon his neck. If you're in respiratory arrest because your your diaphragm is is not working, your muscles are not working, so you can't breathe. So he was he probably he felt that in the car. Oh yeah. Yeah, he, and you he know, probably knew what he had done. And I just in my humble opinion here uh oh, medicine and somebody who has been prescribed fentanyl before um, and who is given fentanyl, uh, he probably knew that he had a big mistake on his hands. Yeah. Like, I wish I would have not done that. Right. If they would have taken him to jail, he, he would probably have, would have died in jail. He would have died in the car. In I think he would have died in the car. So yep, the, there's there's a, there's a scar on his clavicle, his, his shoulder blade. The abdomen, the ch the chest is symmetrical. The abdomen is flat. The external junk of a adult male is normal. Everything's normal. Yeah. Uh, and Marvel. so the the everything here is basically normal. And so there it is. There's no findings of any injuries to his neck. This is all subsequently the result of him ingesting that fentanyl before police interaction. And why wouldn't the why wouldn't the courts allow the facts of the matter, the science? Do you trust the science? Trust the science. Trust the science. The science is right here, but nothing. This is but such the science a didn't fit the narrative. The science didn't fit the narrative yes and with that you guys that's the video that's the autopsy it is living proof i will also try my best to include the link to the autopsy so you can read it yourself nothing has been doctored again this is all based on opinions this video it actually has the er report in there of everything the er did it which does is protocol for what we would do in an overdose situation we would intubate you so we could breathe for you um, we would do our EKGs. I think he ended up getting a chest tube, it says, mm -hmm. and, you know, he had a broken rib from CPR compressions. I don't know if that was the paramedics in the, in the, uh, ambulance or if it was in the ER it could have happened at any time, but clearly, um, the EMS that they said they never tried to provide first aid. How did EMS know that, uh, there was a situation if nobody had called for EMS? Exactly. The uh, the police did. They radioed for it. It's all in records, but this was all kept from the court case. And I, I really do hope that that these police get exonerated because, look, if they had done something to cause the death of this man, then fine. You should be held accountable. But with the science, the trust of science, it doesn't add up. It adds up in favor of the defense, not the prosecution here. And again, I think you're right when you said this. He was already found guilty by media, by the media. Oh yeah, instantly. And by social media, by social he was media. Found guilty by the people videoing on their phones. Yep. And you know, if I'm going, why the police don't want them to intervene right then. They have a volatile situation. They have somebody you can't always tell they're resisting if they're tensing up. The public wouldn't even see that. Yeah. Now Derek Chauvin would have felt that. And they oh, yeah. also had compression on his diaphragm with the knee in the back holding him down. Now he was fighting. They had to hold him down. He's a big dude. Yeah. Six foot three or uh, four and 223 and pounds. On, and he's up on methamphetamine and he's probably pretty strong and his, you know, nervous, his fight or flight response is kicked in and he doesn't want to be arrested. Right. Absolutely. Well, thank you for coming on and explaining all of this to me okay. and, and to everybody else, because as a medical professional, it is important that we get the facts presented. And you did a beautiful job, Dorinda. Thank you for joining me. You're welcome. I'm just wondering why 10 minutes later, I could not, that link said that there was an error and it was taken away. Yeah. In fact, I do have that. Let me see if I can pull it up. So I'm gonna I think the to... first way I tried to send it to you is through the link. I'm going to try to, I'm trying to hide your name here. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to hide your name and email, but it's uh, here. I'm going to click on the link and I'll show, I'll show everybody really quickly. The link that you shared here. It was Hennepin County. Yeah. Hennepin County. 
you can go, you can see on the search. Well, you can't see it on the search bar, but it's hennepin.us forward slash site core forward slash service forward slash not found. So they, they removed this from the Hennepin County Medical Examiner's website. And uh, clearly they revised it, named it something else, and on it went. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just think that there were outside uh, circumstances rather than just a knee or, you know, if I have already taken enough fentanyl that I've compressed my own lungs and diaphragm, then if I get in a fight with the cops and I have to be restrained, all of a sudden that fentanyl would, would hit him pretty all at once, pretty fast. And he probably couldn't breathe. But yeah. if he was tensing up, you know, Derek Chauvin, one of the things that they complained about was that um, he, that George Floyd was experienced calling for help, saying he couldn't breathe and then became limp, which you can see in the video. He starts, you know, with the foam in the mouth and he stuck, you can see him become limp. But you have to understand that Derek Chauvin has also been in a fight with him. And they have been holding him down, this big dude, and EMS is already on site. Yeah. They're already on the way. They're already getting there. And everybody can Monday morning quarterback this, but you have to admit that fentanyl has something to do with it with this death. You Absolutely. can't take it out. And the media completely kept it out of the narrative. Absolutely. The narrative was cops killed a black man. Yep. And what's really sad is that he he's he died. He he lost his life. But we cannot excuse the fact that he put drugs in his system before the police interaction. And then while in police custody, he ate that fentanyl in the back of that cop car. Which and I for one, I don't I, I'm not glad that he's dead. I feel I feel terrible. I feel terrible for his kids more than anything because that drug, all those drugs, all of those years, and him, him spending eight years, uh, eight different times in prison, took him away from his children, and so I can't feel bad for how he led his life. I, I can't because he held up a pregnant woman, he held her at gunpoint to rob her with his goons, and I, I just can't, I can't feel bad for him, how he led his life. But I do feel bad because I feel bad for all 300 people every day that die from fentanyl every day, 300 yeah. people in America die from fentanyl and why the media wants to remain silent on this is bullshit. You have this, these platforms to do good for the greater good. Do well, they? I think that no. George Floyd lost his life that day, but so did Derek Chauvin yeah, and Derek Chauvin. officers and they lost their families. Derek Chauvin's marriage fell apart. I mean, they lost their families. They lost their time with their kids as well. Careers, and families, homes. That's not it's just ridiculous. To me. If you no. withhold information or add information and just, I think George Floyd was used by yeah. the mainstream media and by the political system. And people were all so ready to jump on that bandwagon. Mm -hmm. They were just waiting and they were going to, they were going to ignore the facts anyway. Yep. And they did. And they ignored the science in court, which is terrible. But we'll, we'll continue this again. This was fun. Thank you for coming on, Dorinda. All right, guys, leave your comments down below. Make sure you flood the comments with whatever you want. We'll answer them the best we can. Uh, and I, if you want to see Dorinda come back on, I will have her. Just let me know in the comments. All right, girl. Love All right. You. Bye, guys. Bye, Jen. <laughs> See you, honey. All right, guys. From a medical professional's expertise, somebody that has been in the field nearly 20 years, I think her opinion matters a lot, especially since she's been in these types of situations before. You know, guys, she said it perfectly. The media hid the fact that fentanyl played a massive part in the death of George Floyd. You know it. I know it. We all know it. If we don't start talking about it now, what can change? And I'll tell you what. Look at 300 Americans every day who die from fentanyl. Now, imagine somebody accidentally dies from fentanyl and we just blame the police officer. Well, that's what happened in this case. Period. Dot. And let's hope that we can get justice. Real justice. Because I'm pretty sure that George Floyd, even as a lifelong criminal, would not want this for Derek Chauvin and all of the other police officers involved. He would not want 
police officers to be sentenced to life in prison because he made that fatal mistake. Because I'll tell you what, drug addicts, don't discount them. They do have consciences. All right, guys, my name is just Jen. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit the like button. I've been demonetized for telling the truth. So if you want to help, the links are in the description. My Patreon is also available for you guys. Exclusive content, ad-free, censor-free. You get first peeks. Uh, you get first glance uh, glimpses into my latest content. And if you want to join the Patreon to help me out, you can. Thank you, guys. Once again, my, my dear friend, thank you for joining me. I love you to pieces. Guys, take care. All right. I'm just Jen. See ya.